guys, welcome back to We Watch the Movie. I'm Mike. I'm Lamar Luttrell. And I don't want to be buried in a big cemetery. I just want the far boy fan wound. <laughs> <laughs> Pet Cemetery. We've been doing the fuck out of Pet Cemetery. That sounded poor. We've been having sex with it. Yes. A lot. Yeah, dead pets. <laughs> I. We live in Kentucky. Yeah. No, uh, we've been covering the fuck out of Pet Cemetery these past couple weeks. I just watched the original for the first time since I was a little kid the other day in a live stream. That video's on our channel if you want to check it out. And uh, we also reviewed the movie, which is also on our channel if you want to check it out. I also get naked in a bathtub and rub uh, hot chili oil over my body. That's on the channel if you want to check it out. And he makes sure to pull up the line so his neighbor can see. Yes, but today, his name's Greg, oh, but good. today we're talking about the new movie, um, the Pet Cemetery remake. We're gonna start it off. We're gonna go non-spoiler at first for all you guys who haven't seen the movie. Give our quick thoughts before we get deep into the spoilers. We're gonna be plenty of warning, Greg. Don't worry. You guys are gonna be lubed up before we get to the fucking dirtiness. <laughs> yes. I promise you that. Yes. I promise you that. Uh, this is one of those remakes. I felt like I'm not saying it was necessary, not saying it was needed, but it was good. I liked it. I yeah, it. it. It's a solid uh, retelling of the classic tale of the original movie that came out with Mary Lambert as the director. And it's it's not like it's bad. It's not amazing to me, but it's still so, uh, it looks really, really fucking good. It's got like this, for me, I don't know, watching it and just the way that it plays out and the way that they tell the story, it's kind of like um, a dark fairy tale, like a, a gothic fairy tale and with horror elements thrown into it, which I guess that in of itself would be a gothic fairy tale. Um, the acting is good. Everybody does a good job and, and I like the direction and some of the ways that uh, they move the story differently from the original one. Now there are problems with it as well because sometimes what works in the original one just should stay in the original. You know, sometimes remakes aren't better. <laughs> I didn't know you were going there. I did. No. I uh, uh, still, far away I did. Nonetheless, the horror elements that existed in the first one for me, it was because it was such a subtle way they told the the story in the original. Uh, Mary Lambert 89 uh, Pet Cemetery that it just worked overall as a film and it was that was made it scarier is because it was un, like the undertones of that film were just there like I don't know and and the fact that it seeped into your butt yeah right there you know don't ever eat those chips with that weird stuff in it like with Alestra uh, but yeah you, you, get, <laughs> an, leaky you get anal leakage uh, but yeah but it was just one of those kind of movies that did that and it scared me and um, also the emotional impact while this that does exist in this movie which like, I know everybody classifies, and it is, Pet Cemetery as a horror movie. I think that when Stephen King wrote the film, or, or wrote the book, and then it became a film, and Mary Lambert, I think, got it, the original director for the original movie, it's it's a horror movie, but it's also uh, dealing with tragedy on a level of, that is unheard of. Like, it, it really is a sad story at the core of it, and, and what, what links a person will go to to have one family member that they love more than life with a visit with them. Not a kid dies. So that's worst, what I'm saying. Yeah. To, yes, to me, and being a dad, it's the worst thing that I could possibly imagine happening on this earth is, is to have one of my kids dies. And, and and both movies deal with that. They have it happen. Now, there's something that they twist around with that. We won't get into it just in case you haven't watched the trailers and that, that hasn't been spoiled for you. We won't be the ones to do that. Just like we won't spoil anything until here in a few minutes. But yeah, man, I, I liked it a lot too. I think. Um, I, I, what, let's go with what I didn't like, because there's a lot I really liked about the movie. What what this movie doesn't have that the old movie have is that Maine atmosphere. The first movie, they Stephen King was dead set on having it being shot in Maine. And, and the atmosphere there, it's this rolling landscape and countryside, and you're really in that place. This movie, the cinematography is great, and it's really clean, and it's really well shot, and it's really well done from top to bottom. But they are missing that whole atmosphere there. A lot of people wondered what was going to happen with Judd and how that character was going to go, because everybody loves John Lithgow. John Lithgow is a fucking national treasure, man. Judd's a hard character to replace, man. It's a classic movie character, but I think he did a really good job. And why I think he was good is because he didn't overdo it. He didn't try to overcompensate. He didn't try to put what what the original guy did there. I always overcompensate in the bed. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, yeah. But no, he didn't try to overcompensate. He didn't try to do too much, but he was two things that the original Judd was, and that was he was really likable, but he looked like he had a secret. And he did have a secret. He was Lots complex, he was, he was likable, and he was complicated, but he didn't overdo it and try to do too much. I thought John Lithgow was fantastic and as far as trying to go there in my head to replace the original Judd, I think this was the perfect way to go. Lithgow is kind of like, he, he reminded me like while good in the film and he's got that grandfatherly feel to him, he also did look like the guy that sold you a shitty car and he doesn't want to tell you that the transmission is going to go out every day. <laughs> 
the uh, as far as the sad stuff goes, as far as like the, the moments of grief, there's a couple things this movie doesn't bother with that the original did, and we'll get into that in the spoiler stuff, but uh, I still felt it a lot, and we've talked about this before. I have a three-year-old daughter named Ellie, and I have a nine-year-old daughter named Memphis. The girl in this movie's name's Ellie, and she's nine years old, and she looks exactly like my daughter. This fucked my wife up. My wife was like ugly crying in the theater because it was hard It was hard to, to watch. Yeah. I mentally prepared myself for it going in because if you guys saw how much the original one fucked with me. And speaking of which, that's one thing I actually did not like about this. One of the few things I didn't like compared to the original is uh, I loved John Lithgow, and I thought Jason Clark did a good job, but I felt like the relationship, the closeness that you felt between the Judd yeah. and Lewis in the first movie, Wasn't there. completely gone. Jason Clark didn't even seem like he liked Judd. The, yeah, there was no there was no moment at all during during the those two together that I was like, oh, there's going to be an impactful. Uh, you know, a scenario later on in the film that, it, that things are going to come to a head and it's going to be like, oh shit, like this is fucking. Ha I don't know. I didn't even, feel that camaraderie. I also didn't. I also did not like how they used Pascal in this. Pascal had a lot more in the original movie and in the book. He, Pascal was there a lot. Like he was in the movie, but he's not really there. Like he's there in two scenes, basically. He's not really there. Maybe three scenes, but he's not there in the way that they shot it in the original film or in the book. Like, like, and, and, and you know this. What Pascal was, was, I mean, obviously he was a dead fucking spirit that got hit and his fucking caved head is still leaking jelly fluid. I get it. That's just this, this is just the, the ripping and the tear. Right across the, right across the deal. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, but he, in a way, I felt like when I, when I read the book and, and, and the way that Pascal was supposed to play out was that that was the conscience, conscience of Lewis. Like, this is really terrible for you and what's happening to you, but listen to the inner voice of me saying, this is some bad fucking shit. Jiminy Cricket says, fuck off. Well, speaking of Pascal, man, I actually, I, I didn't mind Pascal. I didn't love it, but I didn't love Pascal in the original either. The way I felt He was just more there. Like, yeah, and that's kind of what they did with Pascal here. He wasn't bad. The special effects, the entire movie were great. Yeah, uh, Pascal was, was great too, the way that they did that. But in this one, it's not that he was bad, but he, he wasn't such a novelty like he was in the original film. But he also wasn't cheesy, kind of like he was in the original film. Yeah. So depending on your taste, you're either going to like this Pascal better or you're gonna like the, the old Pascal better. I didn't mind him. I kind of fall in between there. The whole the thing with Zelda, and we'll keep this real clean for the until the spoiler part, I did not like Zelda nearly as nope. much. They replaced the creepiness with the jump scare factor coming with the whole Zelda thing, and I just didn't dig it that much. It wasn't bad, but it was the original one just fucked with you. This was just like a wham bam thank you ma'am scare. Yeah. And and that wasn't really all there. The wife, I felt like they changed some things about the wife that that I that I thought were fine, but for the most part, she was kind of forgettable. She didn't do a poor job. I think that, yeah, um, the girl that played her in the original one was way more, again, I'm going to say involved. Yeah. Like, she felt more like background static noise. Like, she yeah. was there and, and not taking anything away from her. Uh, she does a good job with what they gave her to work with, but she just wasn't there. And I understand that the story is focused on Lewis, but it's, I always thought the story was focused on the family dealing with what happened. Yeah. So, yeah, but... Like I, I don't want to I don't want the the video to go too long because I mean we gotta get to the spoiler too. Mm -hmm. But I will say overall like I enjoyed it. It's fun. There are some jump scares in it, but I think that they're cheap. I think that there's some cheap jump scares. I mean I only jump like maybe twice. I, I, a little bit of poop came I was, out. I was half asleep dude because I just got off work, so the jump scares actually got me this time. A, a little poop got came out, but it didn't like it didn't sting. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, it wasn't like overall, I, I actually felt like it was going to be like super fucking scary. Maybe that was my own fault going in expecting too much from it. However, it's still solidly shot, still great uh, retelling of it, and it's an 8 for me. So I mean, it's definitely one of those movies like if you love the original or if you've never even seen the original, go watch it. And I think it's good. I mean, maybe they, like you can make the argument, like, well, maybe they didn't need to remake the movie. But this introduces it to a new generation of people that might not have ever checked out the original one, yeah. so it's a good for that. I'm definitely glad they remade it, man. I thought it was fun. I enjoyed watching it. I enjoyed watching them. They throw some subtle references to the original movie, and they change tiny little things, and it's really nice. It's really fun uh, for a fan of the original movie. The first two acts uh, might have people... I think people are making up their minds up before the final act of the movie, because um, I've seen a lot of people really hating on this, and that's fine, too. Feel the fuck how you want to feel, man. Uh, I liked yours. it a lot to the point where I give it, you gave it, I give it 8.5. I enjoyed the shit out of it. I really, I can't wait to look at it again. It stuck with me. I thought about it for a while afterwards, and I feel like uh, I like the Amityville Horror remake with Ryan Reynolds a lot. I think this yeah. is one of those good remakes that 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 it didn't change yeah, a that, lot. Yeah, it the Ryan Reynolds one for sure. Yeah, it, it didn't do. It, it wasn't legendary or anything like that, but it was just a well-made film, and they did a good job with it, and it was fun and entertaining, and I liked it a lot. A lot of people are judging the movie through the first two acts, and I don't think the first two acts are bad, but they 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 take less risk and they do less weird things with the first two acts. It's in the final act where this movie makes 
makes it its own a little bit and it does some crazy stuff. Some people aren't gonna like that because they change some things that happened in the original movie and they flip it on its head. I think you have to do that. Fuck yeah. And I felt, even though <laughs> even though this is based off a Stephen King movie, uh, I feel like uh, the way that it ended, the way everything wrapped up, it felt like the ending to a Stephen King movie. Uh, it, it, like a different Stephen King movie, but all the more, it felt right. It, I, it all I, fit in right for I, me. I didn't mind the ending, but the ending also kind of reminded me of American Horror Story, what the fuck. <laughs> it, it kind of reminded it was one of those like TV show endings, but... I like the coolness. It was, it was cool. It. it was cool. I mean, it was different. I wasn't expecting it, so it was pretty cool yeah. either way. And there's and the cats are fucking great. The cats are yeah, awesome. Like the cat uh, they good. use three cats for this. Uh, uh, not in the movie. It's the same cat. It's church. But I love the way they did with that. I don't know. I like how they layered the family. I like the things that they changed. Uh, it uh, just looks good. Some, it just looks good. Yeah. Some things I liked better about the original. Like the way you A couple things I liked better about this one that they did. And we'll get into all that. But yeah, 8, eight for J, 8.5 for I eight. just want one day. I mean, I like... I. Look, I love the Ramones, and either play the goddamn Ramones through the fucking movie because they don't do it, <laughs> or put fucking voodoo in there from Godsmack when he's walking up to Pet Cemetery because that's all would have been perfect. <laughs> I'm not the one that's so far away. When, when my cat died, spirit. I will bury him anyway. My name. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So that's it for the regular review, guys. Uh, if you haven't go seen it, both of our recommendations is to definitely go fucking see it for sure. I think it's totally worth a watch. Uh, one of my favorite movies I've seen. Oh, and this short year so yeah. far for sure i just enjoyed the shit definitely out. a top work um so that's it for the regular review now we're going to get deep and dark into the spoilers okay. um so i want to say the first goddamn thing about the spoiler by the way if you haven't seen the movie i'm going to give you fair fucking warning click the shit out now yeah get out get out get out take your dick out the glory hole it's done oh no, no no it's done so the first thing i want to say about uh first off I, I love John Lithgow. Like, I love John Lithgow. He's, to me, he always will be the funny dude. Like, I don't know. There's something about him that's always, like, going to make me laugh. Someone said that, too. They're like, uh, he would deliver lines and it wasn't bad, but I would laugh because he's John Lithgow. Yeah, it's John Lithgow. Uh, you know, a lot of people remember him from Third Rock from the Sun and, and various other films that he's been a comedy guy. I will eat your face! That's what I was going to say. Like, there's one scene when when it, you know, he's being stalked down uh, when Ellie comes back to life and they do follow the same plot line. She goes after Judd and she, like, disguises herself at one point when they fucking slices Achilles. Fuck it. That's some nasty shit. But he falls on the ground, and then her face transforms into his wife, and she's like, you know, you did the same thing to your wife, and she's suffering in hell, and now it's time for you to suffer with me. And he starts by, he's like, I'd like to see you goddamn try. <laughs> <laughs> I will eat your face! <laughs> Dude, I start laughing my ass off. I, I know it's supposed to be like super serious and shit because I was. The, I wish they had just said that. Uh, goes, I, I'd like to see you goddamn try as he's reaching for the six shooter to blow her ass away, fun. and then she stabs his ass to death. But I want to be like, I, I'd like to see you goddamn try because I will eat your face. <laughs> like, and then, or, or like, I wanted him to like when he looked across the way and he saw her like uh, you know, when he saw her in the window with John Lithgow. You remember in Orange County he was like, what the. F <laughs> <laughs> I think that's really interesting because this brings in his wife into play, which the original did not do. Uh, he talks about his wife. She's mentioned several times, and I like that. Uh, I liked a few things about this. When Ellie's talking to him and she's being all fucked up, and she turns into his wife, they hint at the fact that he buried her in the pet cemetery, which tells me. Uh, he wanted to get one more poon tank. Did there. they make John Lithgow look, I don't know what he looks like actually today, but did they make him look a little bit older? Because their plans are to maybe go back and do a prequel Possible. and tell that story. Because I think that I would like to see that. It wouldn't be bad. I mean, but there were, I don't know, I don't know if Stephen King, I don't think there was a prequel to the film. And that's why no. Stephen King kind of was like against the idea of a sequel. Because he's like, there. it's like, I mean, it not, makes money there. Not, not against it, but just like, it's not my movie. So yeah. they, if they want to take it and do whatever they want with it, they're, that's their right. <clears throat> the thing about... Yeah, okay, the other spoiler thing, uh, about, it's, it's about Lithgow, uh, or just his his portrayal of Judd, is that Judd also warns Lewis in the original one uh, about, remember that World War II soldier? Yeah. And he's like, you know, and he's like, Gracie, no, that was an abomination, and me and some other men folk went down there. And, they like, they that, that wasn't even in there. And that, I think that's why, because either they're going to use that for a prequel, or they're going to use but, John Lithgow's wife's story as a prequel. Well, I think they could have had both in there. Like, I mean, you could have hinted, because all it was was subtle hints that he had put his uh, wife in there. I mean, all you got was Ellie. You could have had that flashback moment, and that's what he was explaining to Lewis why you can't do this. Right. Because... 
that thing that came back was not fucking I, the son. I think the wife is why. I think they replaced that with a wife. And I also think uh, what I like. Uh, what did you like? You well, I guess the idea of the wife being buried there would make more dramatic sense. But but him explaining, I don't know. I think, it I think it ties uh, Judd closer to the story of what's going on. Because mm -hmm. one of the few problems I had with the original was I kept thinking like, okay, Judd knew that this goes poorly. Like yeah. he knew. I know he felt for the family and he felt bad for the little girl and the cat or whatever. But he seems like a pretty sensible guy. So the point where he's like, he's like. We should, I'm gonna take the pet. We're gonna bury the cat there, knowing it's gonna come back fucked up. Uh, that always seemed like kind of a plot hole to me. I, I, but in this, yeah. what they did was he said he he has a whole new line of exposition, which is really great and a great addition to the film, where he says there's something about that place when you're there. It makes bad ideas sound so much sweeter. Well, it, they, I love that line. They, they show that in the in the movie. Remember, because you hear when he's like showing him the regular pet cemetery, and he hears it over the thing. It was like it was like calling to him yeah. and like influencing him to do that. And that's when he's like, "You damn fool! What have you done?" Mm -hmm. He's like, "God damn, I never." I should not have smoked peyote. <laughs> peyote. But yeah. What so, the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? What the fuck? One thing I like better about the original, again, is that the burial of the cat was so much more in depth and it gave that scenery and it gave that whole thing to that film. This was just like a quick wham bam, thank you, man, they buried it. The burial of the cat to me was way better than the original. Oh, yeah, for sure. Than what they did here, even though you had that creepy Wendigo in the background. Well, that was, all that shit. That was Ellie. Right when he brought, it. but yeah, that it was cool. And then you know, I did like I did like Jason Clark's when when they're burying the cat. He's like, "What are we doing here, Judd? What do we do?" Yeah, and I, and, and you know, Judd like he's like, "Don't worry about it." You may have. He's like, "You may have. I can't help you out. I'm gonna smoke this stogie. Uh, uh, stogie. You came in here. And you're fine. <laughs> yeah, I quit. But no, you're fine. Uh, but yeah, so. It, it was. It, it's got a hit or miss on on how you feel about that scene. But yeah, the, the original burial uh, burial of the cat in the, in, the, in the Mary Lambert film is better. But now I want to talk about Zelda. Yeah, I figured that was next. Let's go talk about Zelda because I was fully prepared to have a lot of pee coming out and you know shitting my pants and running away from the theater, crying, talking to my mother, going to church the next day after seeing Zelda. It didn't happen. I don't know. Like, I guess they just gave it all away in uh, fucking the trailers, oh. and, and, and and like I don't so, even think it was that. I think when they added the the lazy Susan, no, the, not lazy the, Susan. the dumb waiter, the dumb waiter. When they added <laughs> lazy Susan, <laughs> that's, like, that's, a, that's that spinny thing. <laughs> that lazy bitch. That lazy uh, hoe needs to get a job. No. I think that that they replace creepiness with a fucking jump scare because it's over so quick. Like she goes up to the dumb waiter and you're like, oh fuck, here comes Zelda. Here we go. And then it's just like she falls in and it's scary and you go, that's a cool idea. They had her fall and die. Like, first off, how stupid are you? Like, how fuck did you crawl in that bitch? You gotta be quicker than that. Like, did she crawl into the? I gotta get in that bitch. Oh fuck! <laughs> she, I, I can understand. Like it was sad because Spinal Man and Jonas is no joke, and like it was sad. And I got that. Like you know that Zelda went crazy and hated her because she could walk around. Because you remember in that one scene, there, uh, she's going through a scrapbook, and her sister used to be a cute girl or whatever, and then she got suffering for. some and then there's one, like, before even the part with the dumbwaiter, she looks over her covers and hates, like, you see that hatred in her eyes. But, like, nonetheless, it doesn't affect mental capacity or, well, not really. I mean, you're still going to be smart enough not to crawl inside of a fucking dumbwaiter. <laughs> like, ain't you ever seen H2O? But, uh, yeah, like, that whole scene, and that scene, I was like, whatever. Like, when it falls down and she's like, oh, blah, blah. I'm like, yeah, well, I guess you're dead. So I don't have to worry about feeding you anymore, bullshit, chicken noodle soups. <laughs> like, I, but I, I was expecting... I was expecting her to come out in the hallway like we saw in the trailer, yeah. you know, doing the whole grudge crawl. I was full on expecting that I had my, I had what I, what I like to call the clam chowder. <laughs> this, boom. <laughs> like I had this whole fucking thing set, I was ready and it never happened. Uh, I don't know why they cut that out of the movie. The, the dumb waiters, how, how Zelda died. I thought it was way more effective in the original film when the girl sees her choking and instead of helping her, she lets her die. She's like, right. she always wanted her and to I die. And I think that was a purposeful choice, but and this is why I don't like it, is because it was a purposeful, per, per, perpetual nature. Oh, it was, it was oh a God. purposeful choice by oh the God. filmmakers because they wanted to make the wife in this more likable, I think. Maybe. I, I think they wanted to take away that edge of you did something wrong and they wanted to make her likable. The problem is, and uh, you know, Amy C. Metz, if that's how you say her name, she did a fine job in the movie. There's nothing wrong with her, but that character never popped. No. That character never stood out in this movie like the mom did in the original. And I think it's because they took away that, that piece of story. So L A, you took away uh, a mm -hmm. cool scene with Zelda and, and B, you took away a really interesting story for the mom. Now, when she the, she does see her later on, uh, she she has the vision where she pops up with a medicine cabinet and she falls down the dumb waiter again. Now the jump scare got me, and the jump scare was scary, I, but it doesn't equal the creepiness of her running across the room and be like, <laughs> yeah, 
that was you. And, and, and yeah, that, that part, yeah, that was like, first off, when you open up your medicine cabinet in the middle of the night, you're expecting to see some normal shit, all right? Like mouthwash, uh, Valtrex. toothpaste, Valtrex, uh, petroleum jelly. The fucking latest issue of subscription to Men's Magazine. Whatever is in there. Like, I don't know, Gabapin. <laughs> and you and, and there's a fucking hole. The last goddamn thing I would do is be like, hey, I'm going to look my head up. I'd be like, I got termites, and I'm going to call the fucking person tomorrow. Because <laughs> I, I, if you imagine if normal people would open up it. Like, look, I know it's a horror movie, and they got to do it. Otherwise, the movie would come to an abrupt end. But I would see that, close it gently, like, not today. <laughs> not today. I obviously drank too much. I'm going to go back to my bed. But, yeah, that was a good jump scare. It wasn't even really a good jump scare. Because, yeah. like, you know, talking about telegraphing, everybody knew that. W I thought maybe That's the bitch. True. You saw I, thought, I thought the bitch might be like walking down the goddamn. Like that would have been scary. Imagine like her legs all bent up and walking down the fucking. Yeah. Woo! Oh, and something. Talk about telegraphing. Yep. So, so Zelda. Like as much as we both liked the movie, Zelda was not done as well yeah. as the first one. She wasn't done poorly in any other movie, been serviceable. But, but that was a great part of Pet Cemetery. Did you like the scene then, though when uh, the mom becomes Zelda for a second and then she pulls herself out of the dumb waiter and then she pulls her, you know, the cover up over her head and like I was like, it's all right. It, it just didn't really go anywhere. To me, they replaced a really creepy great scene in the original with a conjuring type jump scare and it's conjuring type creepy over the cover scene I didn't like that as much as much as I like the movie I didn't like that as much but talking about comparing them uh, Judd's death when Judd dies in this uh, they did a good job with it they did cut out the mouth scene though there was no mouth cut which is one of the most fucked up that parts about fun. Judd's and death then, in and the original then, and then the biting yeah and the, and the biting part too uh, but Here's what pisses me off about Judd's death. I thought that part was fine as a whole, but if you're gonna do this, I don't understand this. Why the fuck is the movie gonna, uh, on purpose, like try to trick the audience while you're watching it? Because yeah. you know that the, the kid in the original comes out of the bed and slices his Achilles. And the movie tries to fuck with you, and they try to show the can. I'm pissed not at the movie, but the marketing department. The camera tries to fuck with you. It shows Judd walking by the bed, and, and everyone's like, oh, here we go, here we go, here we go. Um, but it, it, the Achilles slice does he kicks the bed out and then he walks down the steps and then she pops out and cuts his Achilles. But the, you showed that in the fucking trailer. Like if you're going to spend the um, whole five what, minutes trying to trick the people yeah. in the movie, why would you give it away in the fucking trailer? They need to learn how to read signs. Fuck the people who edit but, that trailer. I, but man. yeah, yeah. You look, I mean, it was maybe the, the whole bed scene, which is a subtle nod to, you know, the original, which it was. It's a good idea. Yeah, it was good. But you <clears> fucked <throat> it in the trailer. Yeah, again, the, it goes back to the same old idea that we both have had, and a lot of you guys have too. They give away too much in horror movies, especially in horror movies on trailers. Like sometimes you just show way too fucking much. Sometimes less is better, Lewis. Uh, but yeah, just damn, all the comedy was in the fucking trailer. But that's another thing. Scare the fuck out of me! Oh my god, my heart went. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't know why you would do that, but it was cool though. And this one, like his foot, like separated, like his heels, like. Blah, 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 blah. I don't want to know about your secrets. Gave me a fucking nightmare last night. By the way, I had a dream that, that it happened to me. But um, I hate that shit. Oh, it's darkness. Come but I, night. I love the scene. Uh, the whole Judd scene was extended. Uh, I don't know how the little girl got from her house to Judd's house so fucking quickly, but he knew. He grabbed that pistol. She's and he was like, I know it's you, goddammit. it. She's like the wind. <laughs> but um, what's real fucked up? And I thought one of the most fucked up sadistic moments of the entire movie involved church when um, when Judd's sitting there and, and he's dead or whatever, he's all fucked up and, and she starts fucking with him and then you look and the camera pans over and the cat's sitting there licking its fucking chops and going, nah, cats are fucking yeah, evil. Get into anyway. that fucking <laughs> shit. Get into John Lithgow's neck. Yeah. yeah. Like, Sophia. <laughs> the cat was Facebook that, Live. That part was fucking yeah, weird. Yeah, that cat man. was like into it. Uh, yeah, I mean, as far as like the cat goes, it, it, like there's not much to talk about the cat because I know cute that it's, it's cute, but it's pretty much follows the same pathway as the original church. Like it's fucking nasty and mangy as shit. Like I don't know why you were giving a shit when you. When you see it, you're like, fuck that cat. Now, yeah, I did this like, one, it fucked with the kid. Well, I know, it did fuck with the kid, uh, the little, uh, with Gage, yeah. actually. And once it started hurting Gage, and, and, and there, was a, there was a pretty cool moment when Jason Clark uh, explains to Judd, it hurt, you know, Gage. And, and, you know, you could tell by Judd's reactions, like, oh, I didn't want that to happen. Like, there was always a possibility, because Lewis does say, like, this is fucking crazy. Like, this is what it did. And then he's, and then there is one fucking, I was like, God, I thought something really deep was going to happen when Lewis takes it and drops it off. And he's like, go on. Good luck. Fuck you. Yeah. And he like sits on the edge. And, 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 and like, that cat was like, the cat, your that cat made up, that man. voice. He was like, Ooh. <laughs> I was like, oh shit. That guy, that cat is planning vengeance. <laughs> and I think it was all based around because how Ellie dies, uh, you know, it's in, you know, the spoiler. I mean, they gave it away in the fucking trailer, which is a terrible idea. Uh, it's a little girl on Gage. Um, <clears throat> at her birthday party, she's all depressed. That church is gone. She's blowing out her candles. 
the truck's coming, Gage is running out in the middle of the road, um, you know, like the original one, but this time Lewis saves Gage, but, but the other end of that spectrum is Ellie sees the cat down the road walking towards her and then sets there. The cat knew. Oh, yeah. It, it knew that it was going to happen and wanted that to happen. So when she, so, you know, when Lewis saves Gage, the truck driver swerves over and then the back end of the truck hits Ellie and she's dead. Now, that scene is like the way they played it out when he's running over and he sees his wife kind of like almost in shell shock. It kind of felt like it's not as like, obviously, it's not as shot the same way, but it, 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 kinda, it got the same vibe as Saving Private Ryan. Just kind of like in a fugue, like you know, he runs over and he sees her body over there in the, in the grass. And then now, the emotional impact for me, like I don't have kids, but either way, I felt like the original one when when Gage died and he grabs him and he screams. And maybe it was a little overacting, but either way, they have flashbacks to when it, when it, Gage was a baby up, and it yeah. goes boom, 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 snapshots. Yeah, it was like boom, 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 and yeah. just. That to me was like, it gave me goosebumps. Like I, I'm talking about it, cause it's like, fuck, that's all going through your head in a millisecond and you're holding that your baby and then you're remembering it. They didn't have that when they find Ellie. It's still sad, it's still fucking crazy. This would have been up. better if they didn't give away, this would have been, even even though they didn't include that, this would have been better had they not given away in the trailer. Yeah. Now originally when they gave it away in the trailer, I was kinda like, who gives a fuck? Mm. But then when you watch the movie and you see that clearly the directors had a vision for this, that yeah. they wanted to fuck with people in the most fucked up way, they wanted you to believe Gage was gonna get killed. Yeah. And then when he didn't, you think, oh my that god, would he's have saved. Been, that would have been and like... Then, yeah. And then the kid died. It would have, fought, it would have, been, it would have been crazy. You're like, what the fuck? Did you just go into Ow. fifth gear? And after you watch, Like, at first, I was like, who gives a shit, man? But now, after I watched the movie, I was like, oh, you guys telegraphed your, your biggest fuck in the whole yeah. movie, man. Um, <laughs> this is my... I call this the Wendigo. <laughs> <laughs> Break out the Wendigo! Here we go, Here we go nipple tassel. Here we go, Wendigo! Uh, <laughs> that's how you call it. It's, it's like, like Wendigo. Wendigo. Boy's gone wild. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> I can't believe we just made that joke while we're talking. That's all right. Well, I mean, look, it, it was. I, I got to say, throughout my back. I got to say, the original one, it just was more impactful because of those flash scenes. Yeah, I, I see what you're saying there. And, and, and what was weird about this one was, um, uh, and like I said, I mentally, I really, because the first one fucked me so bad, and I knew, like, I, I was talking about my kids. I, I prepared myself mentally. I was like, it was like when Kevin Costner's pitching in For Love of the Game and he's like, and hence the mechanism. <laughs> the whole crowd goes black. That's what I did when the scene came on. 9 5 a.m. I activated myself. Because <laughs> he's like, he's about to pitch the perfect game. He's like, enhance the mechanism. And the whole crowd goes quiet and he's like in the zone. That's what I had to do to get myself through this fucking moment. And then it still fucked me because it wasn't the scene that did it to me. Uh, it, was the, it was the funeral afterwards yeah. because at this point I'm going, you made it. <laughs> I'm like, I did it. I'm not even crying that much and my wife's like ugly cry but the funeral scene when the tiny little casket gets gets lowered down I'll, that fucking dude, dude Jesus I, I'm gonna Christ. tell you what they also didn't have and, and I think it was more fucked up and more disturbing and just raw in the original one though when the dad gets into a fight with him and you see the casket lid and right. the little hand they missed that they, that that part that part I mean god damn that's fucking that's some disturbing shit like yeah. because they, again you can tell in this movie, that the the, the in laws don't like Lewis, but it's not as oh, obvious. <laughs> Old man Withers just gives him a couple dirty yeah, looks. Yeah, it's not as obvious. Yeah. And even at the funeral, they're staring at him like they hate him. But they don't go in the full extreme like they did. Now maybe they took it back because they're like nobody in their right fucking mind would do that. But then again, people would do all sorts of weird things when they're consumed by grief like that. So I'd the, like to ask them why they did. Yeah. So the that. dad, yeah, the, yeah, the grandparents that in the original one fucking fight him at the funeral and blame him and and you know oh man that fucking scene in the original one where he's like I'm sorry and he's like. Crying and then punches him and then the, the little hand and then it's he screams like, fuck it's like getting glass kicked in your face when you're down yeah man. so this one you know the, it kind of it kind of glosses over that that particular thing they the, the the grandparents the in-laws don't really have much to do with the movie mm -hmm. at all um but you know still i i definitely think that yeah they gave away all their cards yeah way sure. early and and i think it would have been maybe way more impactful if they hadn't done that that being said the movie did that really well they handled it really it would have been really well it would have been really easy to fuck up that scene uh and again we talked earlier about jason clark's emotional response like how you act in that moment mm -hmm. at first like he didn't have to overact or go crazy with it or anything because it's just, it's just so heartbreaking and all crazy um you don't have to because it's so devastating anyways on its own without any kind of overacting or whatsoever what i fucking love though man is when and when uh, there's one point you remember in the original movie when uh, oh and real quick 
Sorry. Mm -hmm. Really quick, when the trucker's driving down the street, his phone rings, and as an ode to the original, I fucking love this. He answers, I think it was a flip phone, he answers it, and uh, it was Sheena calling him when, when he fucked up and wasn't paying <clears> attention. <throat> and the original... The truck driver was listening to Sheena is a punk rock. I, I didn't even mouth. know that. I thought it was you were talking about Tung Lok. Sheena was a man. Like, don't, <laughs> don't, don't play around with Oscar Mayer. Classy you know? fucking reference. I love that. That's uh, cool, though. I like that a lot better than the fact that they didn't even use the Ramones at the end of the movie. They used the cover of Pet Cemetery. But um, going on, in the original, they had the line where the little girl was talking about death and mortality of her cat. She mentioned to her dad, she was like, she was like, I don't want Church to die. She's like, why can't God get his own cat? They... This is one of the best twist remake wise that I've ever fucking seen. Yeah. When Jason Clark's up and shit's going crazy, when after he's buried his daughter and she's yeah, back, his yeah. wife's trying to stop him and he turns <clears> around and this was the height of his emotional response to it and I fucking loved it. He turned around and he was like, "Let God kill his own fucking kid," and I was yeah. like, "Oh shit!" I, I did that thing. Uh, oh. I was like, "Ooh!" <laughs> I did that. Great I was, fucking I, line, I, was like, I was like, "Ooh, cool!" I was like, Great "Oh my god!" Did anybody else hear that? I'm telling. But yeah, that was like, I was like, "Fuck!" Because yeah. it was, it was, and, and it, he got. Upset when yeah, he said it too, you see his face. But I, it, 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 it went with his character at that point too, because his character was just fucking done. Like at that point, he was like, "Hug your fucking daughter." Like I brought her back from life. <laughs> like, 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 Hug your daughter. <laughs> He's like, uh, but, Let me did, fucking hell. but I, I Hug your but fucking daughter. He knew he knew his daughter was fucked up because when when she comes back to life, oh, that whole bro. scene was fucking crazy because uh -huh. he takes her body, buries her in pet cemetery, and like. Like that that scene was actually emotional spectrum wise, it worked because when he's putting her in the ground and there's no coffin, there's no casket, there's nothing for her, and he's like, I'm sorry about this, and he just shoves dirt onto her face, and you see that shit? Fucking like, morbid, man. I know, it was sick. And then he like goes back and you hear the door open and he's looking around for her, and then eventually she comes home. It's fuck because he sees the little footprints. What got what got to me, and again, I was like, this little girl looks a lot like my nine year old. It was fucking bullshit, dude. That did you I don't you probably didn't notice it, but at the party they had this big nine balloon. Mm -hmm. Dude, we had the same fucking. You remember it was hanging in there. We had the same fucking balloon. I don't think I was invited to the her birthday party. <laughs> well, it stuck there. You were invited, you just didn't come. I, I was at oh, work. Oh, yeah, you remember now. I was at work. I'm glad you brought it up. Uh, no. if you go down that way, Lewis, you just keep being an asshole. <laughs> so, um, uh, but, um, anyways, yeah, th that same number nine balloon was the literal balloon we used for my daughter's ninth birthday back in October. It's fucked up. But, anyways, what got to me about that scene, uh, really fucked with me emotional, was the casket lowering down. And then when he goes to, to, to dig her out, or whatever, after he, after he puts, uh, he puts Judd to sleep with the sleeping medicine, which, which is another pointless. Difference. It was pointless. That yeah, was... I actually like that better. Well, no, because he would have passed. Like in the original, he passed out anyway. He just got him drunk enough to where he passed out. He was in a hurry. But yeah. I liked. I don't know. That that was one camaraderie scene I liked when like Judge just sitting out there with the fire, and he just walks up, and his family got it. He's just got two glasses and a bottle. Of yeah, whiskey. they poisoned him. That's not camaraderie. That's some fucking Russian. I shit. know. But Judd looked over, and he was like, "Yeah, so I'm, wait, I'm going to drink that bottle of whiskey with you because your kid died. We're yeah. going to drink that together." You know. Um, but when, when he go, when he goes and he unbears her for the first time, and she's wearing like that, like it almost looks like you know, kind of an Easter dress, the, yeah. the, the stockings and the dress and all that. And, and she, when he unburies her, and she looks still, she looks still clean, like she doesn't look fucked up or anything like that. That fucked with me on, on, on a weird dad level. I hated it so much. I also hated when he, when he, like you said, when he covers her face with the dirt, that was rough as fuck. Yeah. That was bad. But the worst of the worst, man, is when she comes back and you expect her to be creepy and fucked up. I like that he didn't go upstairs and go to sleep, by the way, because that's always bothered me about the original. Like, I don't think- no, I think he was just so consumed with grief, though. He didn't really, I mean- He lays out her clothes, though, and that was, I, that was fucked I up. I know, but here's the thing. What's more believable? I guess doing what he did in, in, the, in the remake makes sense, but at the same time, in the original uh, film, just being completely exhausted mentally and what it. you had just done, you had exhumed the body of your child and buried him into a fucking goddamn Indian burial ground. I'd be like, I gotta sleep. <laughs> like, I'm fucking tired. Like, I don't know. Like, I, uh, I, I guess it works both ways. It, it, it could does. go either way. And, 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 and that's kind of how this movie works. Like, things that could go either way do, and it, and it works as a remake. But, um, yeah, so so when he lays out her clothes, I felt sick to my stomach for him. Yeah. Like, he lays out those tiny little pajamas, man. Ooh, I just felt like it's sick. That's rough. Um, yeah, and, and, and when she comes home, Home, it's beyond fucked up and the little girl uh Sunny that played, came home that played Ellie man uh she was so good in this like this is where the little girl shines yeah. when she comes back her fucking eyes fucked up oh, man. and it's like sinking on its own I was like the, that maybe dude I got scared that's when I got fucking scared for the first time when she's like laying Woo. there and she's like she's like oh man that the interaction yeah, sleep next to it yeah but well the interaction in that whole moment when he she was like you know I'm you're back now it's like back from where and, and he was like, don't, back from Walmart, shut up. Don't worry I don't, about it, Santa Claus And then she's like, can you sleep with me? And he's like, yeah. <laughs> like, I'm 
be like, fuck no. Like, listen, I know I've seen Wondering Eyes, but that motherfucker is on permanent hiatus. Like, that shit is fucking falling down. <laughs> it like a gold I was like, can I, I wanted to put, I wanted to put like a fucking thing to poke it up there like a Lego. But it was so fucked up because you're looking at her face and you're like, oh my god, my daughter's back. And then that eye falls down well, and you know, like, what's next? What else is going to decompose? Well, what else is going to fall a fucking part next to me? Well, you know, it's just the whole idea. Well, even when she comes to bed, before she was in bed with him, like, he's brushing her hair in the bath. Yeah. And you hear that fuck. And she's like, what is it? He's like, it's your fucking staples in your head. Your head is held together by staples. But he's like, it's just, it's just a knot. Now, like, I was making jokes about it, but when, you know, he lays, he's like, yeah, I'll lay down with you after the bath and stuff. And she's like, can you sleep with me? And he's laying there. That was pretty emotional because he's laying there and you see one tear and he knows. He knows. He knows this is not right. This is an abomination. Like, yeah. this is not my daughter. And I just want, I, you know, he tells his wife later on, he goes, I wasn't ready to say goodbye yet. And she, like, rolls over and puts her arm around him, like, I love you, daddy. And, and looking at him like that, like, you know, it's it's a demon. It's fucking goddamn Wendigo. But you, he doesn't know that. And, like, he knows that on, on, a, on, a, on a basic instinctual level, he knows what's touching him and what's next to him is just in the form of his daughter. And but at it, best, it's just gonna, even if it's not, it's just gonna fall the yeah. fuck apart. And I, I mean, you imagine, she probably smells like wet dog and asshole, because cause she's got like decaying, and, and she's got like the little lines of like and embalming she, and fluid. And she's asking questions, which makes it all the more heartbreaking. Which I don't know, I'm wondering like, is there some essence of her that's really there, or I think, but I think maybe it was just the Wendigo using whatever memories yeah, well, that, I, it, yeah, it's not like her at all. And that's what I'm talking about, when people give up on this movie, I feel like they gave up on, on the first two acts, which are pretty standard, and the third part it gets fucked up and they do more with it like the part where instead of just waking up and having the kid there and not even in the same house and fucking shit up he, he wakes up with it he wakes up and he has to go to sleep with it like it, it plays it pretends to be you his daughter with it. <laughs> you bought it you sleep with it. it it pretends to be his daughter for a little while and it makes it all the more sick and twisted and fucked up and and that all those parts got remember that part when she was doing the bad. ballerina dance and then she starts getting more fucking crazy he's like stop it he's like stop it <laughs> I was like yeah it was listen to your up. father but then when the mom comes back and and you know is and Gage is all there and, and stuff like that. They do keep in certain parts, like Gage does see Pascal, and Pascal's still there. But again, Pascal's not as involved as he was in the original one. However, you know, take it or miss it. I don't. I, I like I like Pascal more in the original. But either way, that part we were talking about was like hug your daughter. Like, and I know he's not Italian, but it just it, it, it sounds like it's like a Bronx thing. But and. Oh my god! And the mom's and it's hugging her, and, and she's like, like she knows, like it's not her it daughter. It's an interesting choice to have the mom reject it, because like, she knows it's not her daughter. Yeah, she knows it's not, but that has to take some weird kind of willpower too. Like she gets home and her daughter's there, and you wonder, and she she literally rejects it. Like she has the hardest time with it whatsoever, but she rejects it. She pushes it away, and then he gets pissed, and he starts to go upstairs and freak the fuck out. And that's when you get the, the fucking amazing line that, like, God kill his own fucking kid. <laughs> um, what's fucked up that happens after that, and is really dark and twisted, again, something I don't think people are giving this movie credit for because they gave up on it in the first two acts, um, when when she kills the mom. The mom's reaching out the window, the, the kid stabs her in the back, twists the fucking knife in her back, and then she's sitting there, and the camera pans down slowly, and she's got the knife. This is fucked up. This is twisted. Yeah. Your own dead daughter has a giant fucking Michael Myers knife shoved into your gut. And Where'd is, you get that shit from? Gitsu? And, and is asking you questions while she slowly turns Well, she it. says that you're not my daughter and then she's like, well, then you won't mind dying. And then she like twists that shit out and pulls it. And like, Before she Woo. tells her that there's no heaven. Woo. She's like, there is no heaven. There, uh, this is I came from hell, and you have to you have to realize that. And in your mind, when you think about it, you have to go, okay. Ellie was a nine year old innocent girl, mm -hmm. and if she went to hell, there really is no fucking hell. Well, that, that's right? not. Well, we all know that's not true. That's a fucking Wendigo thing, like Maybe. It's a demon, right? But as the mom, you got to be. That's got to be like the the worst possible death of all time is to have your own nine year old stab you in the stomach with a gut while while telling you there's no hell because she's fucking been there. That's fucked up. Well, and it's twisted and morbid on a Stephen King level that most movies are afraid to go to. So yeah. So other and, than the mist, yeah, the mist was pretty. That was gold name. Uh, I don't even think that was in the book. I think they just made that up at the end. Fuck! Got nasty. You guys watched a lot of goddamn documentaries Practical on the World Joker. War II shits. What? But anyway, uh, yeah, so after that scene happens, um, the daughter is all bent on taking the mom and burying her in Pet Cemetery, which... Now, this the is one what, request she had is, do not do, don't bury me yeah, like you buried the, that fucking yeah, thing. She knocks out the, 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 you know, Jason Clark's character, or Lewis. Now, the thing is... I was fine with the movie. I didn't like the idea that they were trying to make a fucking family out of these dead people. Like they wouldn't do that. Like the whole idea of when they when they come back and they're demons, 
they're not trying, I mean, I guess maybe the possession idea is there, but they're more like just bent on making you personally suffer for what you've done. It's not the fact that they would be burying other people there to make them come back to life to create a whole zombie army of fucking demons. I, but when she brought her in there and she's like, run, like I don't know, she's that fucking run fast fucking to carrying a goddamn full grown woman's body into Pet Cemetery. And then Jason Clark cuts her off and they have this big fight. And then she's like, we can be a family. I just, I, I, I didn't like that. Like, I was like, they wouldn't do, like, to me, I, I don't like, I'm I, I'm not on a personal speaking basis with demons, so I, I'm not saying like, I, they wouldn't do this. Um, I just felt like it was it was a cheap tactic to be like, oh, they're gonna bury them in Pet Cemetery so we can all be a family of demons. Adding on to that whole Stephen King, The Mist adaptation fucked up Stephen King endings, yeah. I actually liked it. I liked it because you, for me, one of the tiny loose things about the original is the movie ends kind of quick, like, like all this fucked up shit happens, the wife comes back and then he just runs It's like bam, 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 bam. Yeah, bam. like this whole horrible thing collapses at once, and they never even have time to talk about that little girl's left with that family. Uh, it's one little of, boy. Yeah, a little. Gage. No, 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 in the original. The oh, little girl's yeah, left yeah, with yeah. that family. Um, but in this one, I, I liked it because it was twisted and fucked up. Uh, first off, the fight scene was kind of crazy because when he's holding her down and she starts doing the demon thing, <laughs> between like, that. Feel the beast! <laughs> feel the beast! Feel like fucking Travis Barker. Ah! <laughs> feel this! <laughs> but, uh, Where do we go from here? Feel this! <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> they should have played that music. <laughs> Where do we go from here? Look at that Travis Barker drum solo. But, um, that added to the demonic presence that, that we've always felt like it was there with the Wendigos, but, what, the, the very end of the film, when you realize what's happening, is this whole this whole family's damned. They're all fucked. They all get buried. Maybe that's what it was. Maybe it's the, you're damned. Your whole fa you've damned your whole family. Yeah, because I, I think that Pasco says you're so close to losing it all. Yeah, like you're so close to losing everything. So when they walk back towards the station wagon, and the whole family's undead, and poor Gage is left in the car by himself, because it, it, it was demented and yeah. fucked up on a level that would only work so well in this movie. And I actually like the ending. And I like the A because I don't think I think if you would have copied the original ending. You would have been doing the remake a disservice. I think you had to come up with your own ending. And I think as far as uh, coming up with your own ending in a remake goes, they took it up a notch and they made it a little bit more sick and a little bit more depraved. And I actually appreciated the the zombieish ending. I don't mind the ending. I, I think yeah, you have to you have to do your own flavor. You have to imagine that you, little kid's gonna get ripped apart by yeah, his own well, fucking family. Uh, by the way, the, <gasps> speaking of which, at the very beginning of the movie, did you get like um? I just watched this last night, so I, I mean, I'm, I'm, it's still fresh in my mind, but um. The very beginning of the movie when they show the crime scene before and then they go back. Uh, I never like when they do that. No, I know, but it felt sinister. Like the movie Sinister. It yeah. felt like, like you know, when they, they show the people hanging from the tree? Yeah. Not as creepy as that, but it kind of felt like that. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, so when Jay, first off, I'm going to let you know, when he's choking his daughter and, and he's trying to be like, we can't be, I was wrong, we can't be a family again. And then the wife stabs him in the fucking back with a, a like a pitchfork, a, like a, a cross. First off, I'm saying uh, we're fi definitely following for divorce. I get out of this grave, we're still divorced. Like I don't know what you're talking about. But there, yeah, the scene when they're walking back to Gage in the in the in the station wagon, and Jason Clark had already told Gage, "Don't open the door up for anybody except for me." So you know, Gage being like a little six-year-old, seven-year-old boy, and then the cat jumps on the car too. Yeah, and the cat's like. <laughs> <laughs> like it looked like when the family was walking towards Gage at the end of the movie, it did feel like kind of like I don't know. It's like when you introduce your girlfriend to your dysfun dysfunctional family. Like yeah, I mean that's every fucking Sunday. Like hey, you want to come to our barbecue and, and hang out with Uncle Teddy? That slightly looks like Walking Phoenix from Joker. <laughs> She's like yeah, okay. It just but and then you hear the the car go beep beep. And then they, they, obviously, you can make the guess that they got Gage, yeah. and that was it. Which is depraved. What's, what's going to happen now? Like, I just feel like, the, I mean, what's going to happen? Where are we going to go? It's over. He wants to fuck a dog in the ass. I, I think it's over. You know what it actually reminded me kind of of a, of a, of a mid-2000s horror movie, the way that they were always trying to show those shocking endings to yeah. you that you didn't expect to see coming? But uh, I, I just in the, in the realm of Stephen King, in the realm of Pet Cemetery and all this stuff, I liked the ending. I thought you had to change it, and I thought they did a good job. I don't think it was bad. It was, I just, it was depraved as fuck. It was pretty um, fucked up. I mean, it wasn't shocking. It wasn't. It wasn't the missed ending, but you know, it was. It was. I like the, the missed ending to me of all time is one of the most fucked up things I've ever seen. I don't but, know if there is a more fucked up ending than the missed man uh, having to shoot your own yeah, fucking that, kid I, I, and I, then I, finding out that you would have been saved five minutes. I, later? I think that I mean we could probably Mama. delve into that, but like it's 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 a fucked up ending. But this one is it's good. I mean I liked it. And again, you're right. Uh, maybe doing what they did in the original Pet Cemetery. However, I liked the original Pet Cemetery ending better just because. 
when his wife dies and he killed his kid. Oh man, when, it, when he's like, come here, buddy. And he's like, daddy, no fair, no fair. Like oh, that was yeah. like, and he put that, that and, and that baby cries when he puts the, you know, the the needle in his, and he's dying. Oh, the death there uh, uh, of Gage. The re-killing of his kid is way more painful than that. Yeah, and then, and then he picks his wife up and he's just like, you know, he, at that point, that man is consumed by grief to a point where he's completely gone crazy. Mm. And, and then he's, and, and he's like, I did it different with him. I, you know, she's still fresh. And then Pascal's like, don't do it like don't like you you still have the opportunity like I, your daughter still is alive don't bury that wife don't you bury that wife and he's like but i did it too late with gage i, I she just died i can make it cool again steve i think that scene just because of and then he he succumbs to his grief and waits for his death i guess even when his wife comes off you know that's the original one yeah. this one I liked it. It's good, like, it, but it did feel standardized. But it's still, I liked it. I mean, and if as long as they ended, I, I mean, maybe I, I wish maybe they had gone in there and Judd was still alive and threw a fucking uh, Molotov cocktail in there. They all fucking cooked together. <laughs> I don't know, because like, now they're all four. Like they killed Gage, obviously. Like you think they killed Gage, and they're gonna bury him in Pet Cemetery too. And then the Ramones are gonna come out, and then nobody's safe. And then it's gonna be a worldwide pandemic, and Wendigo, Wendy goes, Wendy goes, are everywhere. Mick Mac Paddywhacks are everywhere. Dixie, the birth of Win Dixie. I just, I don't know. I, I actually got it now. That I'm thinking about. It. Wasn't it a station wagon that, that he was in? Yeah. Remember Cujo when they're stuck in the station? I think wagon? that's why. I think that was then, another throwback. That's pretty. But cool. yeah, uh, either way, it's still a solid eight. I mean, it's still one of those movies I enjoyed it. Yeah. And, I, and maybe, like I said, you're right. The the uh, ending, it's its own thing. Like, and they didn't go, they didn't go the route. Even though I felt the original ending for Pet Cemetery was better, they didn't go that route and just remake shot for shot the same fucking mm -hmm. movie so yeah. good for them on that yeah and they had their own depravity to it so I yeah I give the original 9.5 as we just reviewed it I give this an 8.5 uh, I thought they were both really good I thought it was a great remake man I really enjoyed yeah, it, 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 it one of my favorite movies this year so uh woo, so, I mean, that's I, a long I, video I, yeah it's fucking super long god damn I gotta smoke some weed wow uh, but you know at the end of the day uh, if you're into horror movies definitely go check it out if you like the originals uh, Pet Cemetery, go check it out it's not one of those movies that you should turn away and not go see in theaters with other people yeah it's it's, it's one of those things I, I was, I was watching it. yeah I was I was I thought it was cool just to go see the movie I never got to see Pet Cemetery, the original one in theaters and I would have been fucked up if you got to see that in theater but Either way, it's a great film to check out if you get a chance to. Yeah, I, I really look forward to rewatching it, man. It was it was a, a hard movie to watch because the subject matter, but an easy movie to watch because of how it was all filmed. Uh, I really enjoyed the shit out of it, man. I keep thinking about it over and over again. It even gave me a nightmare. So, uh, comment down below with your all thoughts. What did you guys think about the movie? How do you feel about all the stuff we discussed uh, above? There's and, a lot uh, of it too. Dig yeah. into that fucking meatloaf and let me know how you like it. Suck up. <laughs> you love your fucking faces. If you're new to the channel, click that subscribe button and get some goddamn wham up in you. Yeah! Yeah! All I gotta say is... Sudoku! <laughs> <laughs>